Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of The John Morris Show. So Tuesday's episode, I think it was, I talked about, uh, the, answer the question of should you do free work uh, when you're first getting started with with web development? And I talked, I said one of the good reasons why you would do uh, free work when you're first getting started is to help build your portfolio. And so from that, I got a couple questions, sort of the same question from a couple different people regarding the use of portfolios and in particular for backend developers and how you go about as a backend developer who primarily works with backend code and not necessarily front end, uh, how you go about building uh, a portfolio. So I want to go through these questions. So the first one I got from Fredo SK said a portfolio for designers is easier than a portfolio for coders. I think a design I think a designer can take screenshots of their work to show off, but a coder will have problems doing that. Another thing is that a coder has to show that he or she is experienced about security issues like CSRF, XSS, SQL, SQL injection, etc. If I were to hire a coder, I would need to see some code the coder had written, but I understand code, at least PHP. Uh, but I understand code, at least PHP. For someone that doesn't know how to read code, uh, they would have problems evaluating the quality of the code. So how to how do you show off a coding portfolio? Upload code to a website or GitHub that the p- potential customer can take a look at. So that's from Fred OSK. Very similar sort of follow-up question from Ollie who said, Thank you very much, John. I think I'll do a little bit of free work just for that initial work experience. As a back-end PHP developer, how would you go about showcasing your work on a portfolio? I've been developing some account registration, login, and logout scripts, and that's what I want want to work with. Right now, I have my source code uploaded as PHP files on Upwork. Would you rather take screenshots of perhaps interfaces and use those? Do you cover this specifically in your Upwork course or any other course? Or maybe you can answer here directly. Would be much appreciated. So I'm going to go through and talk about this, and, and there are some very specific things that I recommend. Again, I've been a PHP, primarily PHP developer for a long time. And so I've I've dealt with this and there's some things I feel like I've learned along the way that I want to share with you about how you can go and build an effective portfolio for for being a specifically a back end developer. Because I do think there are some things you can and should do to help make your your por- portfolio uh, a lot more appealing. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, before I do, I do want to encourage you to become a supporting listener of the show over on Patreon. Now, again, you, you'll be helping support me and, and allowing me to continue to do this for you. But also, there's a, a lot of perks that you get as a supporting listener to the show. So I keep my Patreon really simple. I have one sort of perk level. It's $10 a month. And for that $10 a month, you get access to all my past courses. So PHP 101, login script, PHP forms, my Upwork 101 course, Everything, every course that I've sort of ever released, you get automatically get access to that, plus a bunch of source code from YouTube videos. There's a calendar script, for example, and just lots of other things in there that you get access to. Plus, you get access to all of my future courses. So, this month I'm planning on releasing module two of my Upwork 101 course. If you're a supporting listener to the show on Patreon, you just will get automatic access, you'll get first access. Uh, to that course. So again, a lot of perks available to you. Again, you'll plus you'll also be helping me out, help supporting the show, continuing to do this this for you on a daily basis. So if you want to learn more about that, you can head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. If you're watching on YouTube, it should be a little little thing that pops up on one side of the screen here if I've done it right. So you can click that link. Again, audio version, iTunes, Android, you can head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. All right, with that out of the way, so let's go ahead and talk about about building these portfolios. So there's a couple things that you need to, I think, think about and consider at first. So the first thing that you need to think about is who ultimately is your audience, because the portfolio portfolio you build is going to heavily depend on that. Now, if you've listened to the show for any amount of time, and I sort of always say this, but I harp on this idea of of specialization, or I might use the word niche, or I might use the word targeting. The But the entire idea behind all of those things is that you focus in on delivering specific end results. One of the big mistakes that I think developers make when they freelance in particular, this is specifically talking about freelancing, one of the big mistakes that I think that they make is 
they go in trying to be sort of a, a generalist and and just you know web developer guru guy or gal and and try to get any sort of work from any you know one day could be building a membership site the next day could be you know debugging some code for you know some form or working with some API from YouTube the next day and so forth and the problem with that there's several problems with that one is really hard to market yourself that way because you don't really have anything specific that you can latch onto and you sort of have to market yourself as, well, I'm just like this great web developer that knows all of these things. And that, that can be difficult to do. You need a lot of proof to be able to do that. It makes it hard to build a, a coherent portfolio and message and so forth, but also on the back end, in terms of delivering, you're always doing different things. And so you never really get into a groove and develop a pattern or a system for delivering. So I, I strongly recommend that you, you specialize like that. So when you specialize, then part of figuring that out is figuring out who your audience is, who you're going to be delivering to. And if you're not delivering to people that are tech savvy, really, if you're not develop, uh, delivering to other people that are developers, then you know, they, they ultimately, those, those clients aren't really going to care about your backend code. That's just the, the fact of the matter, the, 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 even if they did, they're not going to understand it. So when you say things like CRS, uh, CSRF and XSS and SQL injections, they might have heard these terms before, but they're going to have no way, no way to evaluate whether you truly know that or not. They're not going to be able to sit down and look at your code and figure that out. So showing them your those particular people your code isn't going to mean anything. Now, of course, if you are delivering to other developers or people who understand code and can actually do that, then you talking about those things will make sense. And it might make sense to build your portfolio a little more oriented to those people. So the first thing you need to consider is who your audience is. I would say most of the time for freelancers, your audience is going to be someone who's non-technical and is not going to be able to evaluate those things. And so... Again, you have to consider your audience, and then the next consideration following on from that is to realize that ultimately it's the client that counts. Right? It's not what you want to show off. It's not what other developers think you should show off. You know, it's not what other developers think about your code. What ultimately matters, is the only thing that matters, is what those potential clients think, and if it's enough to push them over the edge to hiring you. So... You sort of got to let go of the rest of that baggage of maybe what you want to show off or what you some guy on some forum told you you should show off or some, you know, yahoo on a YouTube video. Uh, it, it's ultimately the client. And so if you know your audience and you know you should give you some idea of the kind of thing that they're after, that's what matters. That's what should go in your portfolio. And the last thing that I'll say is that regardless of what you're doing, at the end of the day, I think visual appeal always matters. Even if you're working with someone who's super technical and understands the code, visual appeal is still going to be important. And the sort of the example I use is so kind of a thought experiment. You know, how many times, and I know I've done this a bunch, how many times have you gone to download or look up an app in the app store, whether you're iTunes or Android or whatever, you've gone to install an app and you, and you ended up not installing it because of how bad the icon was or because you looked at the screenshots and the actual interface looked kind of janky. Now, that that app could function really well and do some really neat and cool things, but a lot of people simply won't install apps and don't like work, working with interfaces that are ugly. And that's just a, a, sort of an, a, a reality that we deal with. We as developers might be a little bit different, but again, most of the clients you're probably going to work with, that's going to be their mindset. So I think visual appeals always matters. So with that said, then I think there's a way that you can build your portfolio that sort of covers all of these bases. So the first thing, as you would probably guess from everything I just said, is that your portfolio does need to be visually appealing, even if you're a back-end developer. Now, the way to think about this is if you're a back-end developer, there's almost, I mean, it's pretty rare that you're not going to have some sort of front-end interface that that's tied into. 
I mean, there's probably some examples you could think of out there, but more often than not, there ultimately there's the point of of any back end code is to to have some sort of front end interface. And so when you're taking your screenshots, if you're appealing to an audience, really any audience, but especially one that's not very tech savvy, yeah, you're going to be showing off the front end interface. And that's not necessarily going to highlight the the important parts of what you do, which is the back end code. But like I said, it's the client that matters. It, it doesn't matter so much what you want to show. It matters what they want to see. That's how you're going to get hired. So again, the, the, the sort of the line that I would use here is that as a backend developer, it might, your, your CSS might do the bulk of your selling for your PHP code. And again, that's just a reality that we have to deal with. So in whatever you do, and really, this is not just for portfolio. This is building applications in general because people don't like using ugly interfaces. So make sure your interfaces are visually appealing. And when you take your screenshots of those interfaces, make sure those are visual appealing. Visual appeal will always matter. And that that's it's just a harsh reality that we have to deal with. Now, on top of that, most places where you... Uh, you can upload a portfolio or you can take these screenshots, you know, Upwork or your own website or whatever. You also have a place where you can write a description about that particular project. This is where you can give people the technical meat. This is where you can talk about CSRF and XS, you know, uh, cross-site scripting attacks and SQL injection and all of that. This is where you can mention the technical meat and lay that out for people who know what that stuff is and want to see that stuff and are looking for that stuff. So what you ultimately do is end up taking the visual appeal apart and matching it with the technical meat part. And now you're appealing across the board to all audiences. And even really, really technical people who are going to dig in on the descriptive part will still, there'll be a part of them that looks at the visual appeal apart and that will help persuade them to hiring you. So ultimately you want to have both in there. Most places you have uh you you can upload portfolios or place portfolios have the option for you to do both. So again, visual appeal, technical meat, and then the last thing is when you're talking about the the technical aspects of what you built, it's always important that you answer the question so what. So you always have to assume that the person reading it, even if they're technical, doesn't necessarily understand the importance of what you're talking about. So when you say you built this application that you know completely eliminates cross-site scripting attacks, you have to go a little bit further and say why that matters and explain a little bit about what a cross-site scripting attack is, what what the dangers of it are, and then that will help them to understand why you saying you built an application that deals with that problem is important. So you always have to answer the question of so what? And what that does for you is it makes it so that even non-technical people can understand the importance of the technical things that you've put in your in your description. They understand the importance of that back-end code. So again, it, the thing to keep in mind is it's it's always on you. You can't expect the client to fill in the blanks. You, if you want to get hired, if you want to get a lot of work, if you, you know, the, if that's your goal, it's all on you. You have to fill in the gaps. You have to fill in the blanks. You have to explain things in detail and you have to tell them why they should care about these things. Now, someone who's more technical might already know that, but even with you explaining it, hey, it's not going to hurt that particular person, but it will make it appeal to someone who maybe isn't as technical. So again, visual appeal, the technical meat, and then always answering the question, so what? If you build your portfolio in that way, you'll have a portfolio that appeals sort of across the board, covers all of the bases, and even really non-technical people can sort of understand the importance of what you're doing and the val ultimately the thing that matters, the value that you bring to the table. It's your job to demonstrate that to them. And answering the question, so what, goes a really long way towards doing that, coupled with you know, the technical meat and, and the visual appeal with that. So that would be my advice for how to build a back-end 
uh, portfolio for a portfolio for backend developers. Now, you know, if you want to go even more into this, more into portfolio building, but really just sort of profile building in general, in particular when it when it relates to Upwork, which by the way is the largest freelancing platform on the planet. So there's tons of work available there. And if you can get this stuff right on there, that's a place where you can get a ton of work. So if you want to go more into this, not just your portfolio, but going beyond building your entire Upwork profile from your title, your tags, the, the description, what tests you should highlight, what certifications, all that sort of thing. If you want to dive into that, then you can do so with my Upwork 101 course at upwork101.com. All right, that'll do it for this episode. If you liked the episode, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, so you can uh, be notified of all future episodes. Also, if you want the links to all the past episodes and the links to subscribe on Android, iTunes, TuneIn, all that, you can find it at johnmorrisshow.com. And finally, if you'll rate and review the podcast over on iTunes, I'd greatly appreciate that. Help spread the message about the show. I will also give you module one of my PHP 101 course for free as my way of saying thank you for leaving an honest review. So all the details for that on how to get the free module, how to leave the review, all that sort of thing, you can find it at johnmorrisshow.com. Just click on the start here link at the top. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.